So the figure below shows the graph of h of x, which is said to be equals to log of x base a. Point A lies on the curve and B is the x intercept of H. The first question, 5.1, we are supposed to calculate the value of A. So what do we have? H of x is equal to log of x base A. We have three variables here, three unknown variables. H of x, which is y, x, and A. So what can we do? We want A. How can we find x and y in order to be able to find a? We can substitute any point which is on the function. We don't know the coordinates of b. We only know the coordinates of a. So we are going to substitute the coordinates of a so that we can have a corresponding x and y. And then sub it into h of x. Okay, let's do that. y is 4. Log of the base is a. x is 16. So in applying log laws, we get a is equals to 4, b is equals to 16. So it would be advantageous for us to write 16 with the numerator of 4. Because in doing that, we can drop the exponents and equate the basis. How can we possibly do that? a to the power 4 is equals to 2 to the power 4. 2 by 2 is 4, 2 by 2 is 4, and 4 by 4 is 16. So that is... That is okay. No wrong, no wrong doing it there. So when we drop the exponents, we end up with a being equal to 2. So there we go. That is our answer. But now we know that h of x is equal to log of x base 2. Well, we don't have to write these. We can just end here. But I think we gonna need to use it as we move forward. Okay, let's take a look at 5.2. So 5.2, write down the coordinates of b. Okay, we now know that h of x is the log of x base 2, as I've stated. Now we need the coordinates of b. b is the x-intercept. What do we know about the x-intercept? y is equal to 0. So the coordinates of b, we have x and 0. Let's substitute that into the equation and find x. y is 0. Log of x base 2. Again, applying these log law. 2 to the power 0 is equal to x. 1 is equal to x. So the coordinates of b, we have 1 as the x value and 0 as the y value. Quite straightforward. If you've been, you know, solving any past exam questions, it should be, able, it should be easy to see that the coordinates of b are 1 and 0. It should be easy to see that we need to substitute b into h of x. Quite a basic equation. Uh, it doesn't require us to do anything cutting the edge. 5.3, we're looking for h inverse. So h of x is equal to log of x base 2. The first step in finding the inverse, we need to swap x and y. Let's do that. So in place of h of x, we put x. And then in place of y, we put x. And then the second step, we make, in place of x, we put y, not x again. And then the second step, we make y the subject of the formula. So how do we do that? Again, the log law. It's very crucial to know these log laws. And then we end up with 2 to the power x being equals to y. So, well, let's just write it nicely. y is equals to 2 to the power x. 5.4, write down the range of h inverse. Okay, so h inverse is equals to... Okay, <laughs> the question in 5.3 said that we must write it in the form h inverse of x. So h inverse of x is equal to 2x. Okay, I almost um, forgot that. Uh, well, don't really forget. I didn't see it. I just solved the question. Um, h inverse is equal to 2 to the x, obviously. And we're supposed to determine the range. So because we have a base which is 2, Right? It implies that no matter what you substitute in the place of x, you are never going to get a negative value. And you are also never going to get zero. There's nothing you can substitute here in place of x that will give you zero. Well, if you substitute, let's say, minus 1 billion, right? Your calculator will give you zero. But the answer is really not zero. The answer is just zero point, a lot of zeros. The calculator just decides to give you zero, right? 
So what am I saying? I'm saying that the range here y is greater than zero. H inverse cannot be zero. H inverse cannot be negative. Y is greater than zero all the time for H inverse. Here we go.